Hi, my name is Ella and I'm the Plants Meow and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about some of my winter growth updates for my anthuriums because honestly they have changed a lot and I'm really excited to show you guys kind of like all the new things that have been happening with them. <laughs> so if you watched my houseplant tour back in December, some of these might look quite different because some of them have shed their original leaves from when they shipped to me, whether that's because they had been battered through shipment and it was time to finally for them to go, or it was acclimation issues, things like that. They're now all finally like in a really good place where they've stabilized. Um, the only thing I've encountered is some winter stress issues, so. A lot of the times with anthuriums, they're tolerant of temperatures to a certain degrees. Some like that drop in temperature, some do not. In winter time, with the fan running in my plant room, and I run it constantly, it can drop to the low 60s, and some of them have not quite like that. But honestly, it's just something that I've started to deal with and started to treat. So I'll actually talk about that more in the what is wrong with my anthuriums video, where I go into details about different anthurium problems and solutions that I can offer you. I've been doing a lot of research into that video so it's probably still gonna be a few weeks to come out I really want to get a lot in there so people really have a place to go when they have a question about their anthuriums I know there can be so many issues that arise with, and I want to try to cover most of those so really quickly just to talk about kind of what it's like here in my plant room so if you look at this you'll notice right now it says 54% humidity uh, usually stays between 55 and 60. I just have everything off right now in this room for the sake of sound. <laughs> and the temperature right now is 71. So that's pretty good. It's the middle of the day, so it gets pretty warm in here. And that's, and that's usually around what it stays like. Now, in the really cold days during winter, it can be the high 60s and it's difficult for me to get it up into the 70s. But now that we're heading towards springtime, this is the perfect time right now for them. They're very happy. I don't have to struggle with kind of monitoring that temperature anymore. So with that humidity and temperature, also if you acknowledge that I have grow lights set up here in the background for them, it gets really dark here in winter, so I do need to augment my lighting with something. As anthuriums do love that bright light. Also remember, don't put them in direct light. So direct sunlight is too much for them. It will burn their foliage but grow lights like these that kind of have a bit of distance from my anthurium shelf are okay. So they're perfectly fine that way. They're very happy. And some of the reasons you really wanna give them more light is because your petioles can get very long. So they're gonna go stretch out into your room somewhere just to get more light. I've had it happen to some of my plants and they look just some kind of crazy. <laughs> so it was really important to me before winter started that I made sure I had a lot of grow lights in this room to kind of test and see how I like. My favorite so far are these bulbs just because they are cheaper and I can put them kind of any way I want. <laughs> I also do have a Soltex Solutions bulb on my other anthurium cabinet in the room. It's pricey and honestly, I think it looks good but I wouldn't pay for something like that again. Maybe if I had it out in my like family room where I needed something really elegant, but if you're just putting something in your plant room, it's not, you don't need like the really <laughs> expensive stuff. The bulbs really do work just fine. So I also do wanna note that the soil composition I'm in, I've mentioned in my Anthurium Care videos. And if you go on my Instagram, I do have my kind of recipe in one of my posts but it's a very airy soil. And I have watered my anthuriums all throughout winter about every three to four days. And you'll pretty much know if they need watering. If they start drooping, I try not to let them get to that drooping. So what I have bought, I have on one of my plants, which I'll show you in a second, a susty water meter. And that usually runs out about the three or four day mark. So if I'm not paying attention to how many days it's been and I walk into my plant room, I'll know, okay, it's time for a watering. And I just use this for my anthuriums. I have them in my philodendrons, but they, they tell me that they're dry pretty quickly and with my philodendrons I don't water them as often so I don't listen to that meter <laughs> but so I find it more useful for my anthuriums but you could really get it for any of your plants but I only have like a couple because they're just pricey so here's my queen anthurium so in my houseplant tour she had this leaf and another old leaf and she took about seven months to produce me this leaf out of um, extreme anger and spite <laughs> She was a bit of a learning curve for me. So I'll be talking about her a lot in my how to not kill your queen anthurium video that I'll be having come out in a few weeks. Honestly, um, it's been a trip. <laughs> so this leaf came out for me in January, which I was so excited about. And then this is also 
just an unfurling issue that is most likely my fault, which I'll also talk about in the video. And what's really, really exciting is she has a new leaf being produced. She's finally happy, guys. She's finally really happy. Like, I've known she hasn't been unhappy, but she likes me now. <laughs> so for my Crystal Hope here and my Silver Bright, which I'll show you right after this, Honestly, during import, they looked fantastic, and then over time, they just lost all their leaves, which is fine, it happens with anthuriums, and this leaf is finally the leaf it has produced me over winter. In my houseplant tour, they had one of their old leaves left each, and they finally have given me a new one. So that is super, super exciting. Just... Look at that shimmery glow. Absolutely love these. The amount of silver in these is really beautiful. And I was actually talking to an expert collector and they're pretty much both Crystal Hopes. I just, for differentiating purposes, I'm still gonna, I'll call the other one Silver Bright even though it is a Crystal Hope. Um, I could call them by their names. This one's Charity and the other one's Sylvia. <laughs> Out of the two, Sylvia produced the leaf first and then about a week or two later, Charity started producing her leaf. And while she has this leaf here, she has also started producing this beautiful leaf here. So gorgeous. I just love, love, love the amount of silver in these. And I've been trying to do research on what the silver is used for purpose-wise. If, if any of you know, please tell me down below or have like, a site or a research article that you know of that talks about this, but I can't seem to find the reasoning behind the silver veining. I think it's beautiful, but I never, sh but I don't know if too much is a bad thing or what, and I don't really know. It doesn't seem to affect them. They're perfectly fine, but I'm really curious to like nature's purpose of this silver veining. I mean, it's really gorgeous. Just love that. That's a new leaf. Sorry, I'm covering my face for these shots just because my camera doesn't like to pick up on my plants. <laughs> so if you watched my last unboxing, Locks of Plant Seller, this is from the same seller, but it's from my first unboxing I did with her. So all of the plants pretty much in that shipment have produced at least a leaf. Just kidding, except for two. <laughs> this one surprised me because, this is Lux by the way, all my Luxa anthuriums are all unknown hybrids, unfortunately. Um, I'm totally cool with not knowing what they are, I just completely love them. <laughs> so all of these leaves, I don't think it had really any leaves that fell off, so it's pretty full in there. But as you can see, this new leaf here just started hardening this week. Oh. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I just can't get over how nice that looks. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with this one. So during winter, I would say that while it's not a ton of growth per plant, a leaf per plant during winter time, in my personal opinion, is still a good amount, especially because in theorems are supposed to remain dormant in order for them to be able to have the energy to produce flowers in the springtime. So hopefully that doesn't affect them, the fact that they're still growing. I've seen other people's, they're still growing too. I guess we shall see. But I'm very excited to kind of hybridize my own Ethereums. I've just completely fell in love with the hybrids and I would love to really like try kind of having my own baby Ethereums. I've already actually collected pollen off of one of my Magnificums, who's confused. <laughs> And I'll be putting out a video on how to collect pollen and then eventually how to pollinate a flower and all of that. And I think it'll be fun. So, so what's really nice about Lux here is that it's not really a velvety anthurium. It's more of a leather, but I love that he has kind of this red dot up in here at the sinus. And if you look at the back, the petioles are also red with some red veins. It's just really, really gorgeous. Luxie pie. So this is my Radicans Dresslary hybrid and it's from my Green Spaces ID unboxing. And you're not gonna see my other one of this because it had a really bad thrip issue. 
during winter time and I've put it in the greenhouse since so it's recovering. It does have a new leaf on the way though which is really exciting but it's been through a bit of trauma. <laughs> I had never dealt with thrips before this winter and I didn't know how to deal with them initially but I've got a really good handle on it now. I don't see them anymore so I'll talk about that in another video <laughs> but Right now, this one's doing phenomenally. It grew this leaf here during winter time. And honestly, with Anthurium luxuriens being so hard to find, this is a great option. It's gorgeous. Like the leaves are absolutely wonderful. I don't think it suffered any acclimation issues. It's just such a happy plant. And I really, really love this one. I really loved my I really love my other one too. It's just had all those issues. And that one is probably a little bit, bit of a bigger leaf shaped specimen. So I'm excited to show you guys new growth on that. It'll just be at a later date. But look how beautiful. So happy. <laughs> So next I'm going to be showing you two Queen Anthuriums that I got from Botanica R Us. And when I got them, they both had one leaf and they were in rough shape. And then they had a bit of acclimation as well. So they have since lost both those leaves, which were in my previous video. And now both have grown at least one new leaf. And I'm so excited to show you them. So this is a smaller one. I've named her Lottie. And because I, I don't know, she's really cute. So these are both brand new leaves for her. She had issues here because of my watering. I had actually, when I water my anthuriums, I water them frequently, but I don't water them heavily. And I actually watered her a bit too heavily once and she got some chlorosis that has turned now into necrosis. And uh, yeah, so I kind of messed that up. She's perfectly fine. Otherwise her new leaf is beautiful here. It's actually, just hardened off, which is really exciting. I'm actually impressed she's even thrown out two leaves. I think that was super quick for it being as long as it was. The other one that I'm about to show you, which is my favorite. Just kidding, guys, just kidding. I really feel like I can't say that in this room, but <laughs> um, has thrown out finally a new leaf and I just can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> So this is Amara and she is getting a pot upgrade so ignore what she's in right now. These are kind of like my starter pots for anthuriums but because they're in net pots I move them out pretty quickly. But yeah I think she's just now started hardening but look at her. Oh, I literally have to step really far back just to get her in frame. That's incredible. She's stunning. And the really cool thing about this anthurium, while a lot of people sell dark form anthuriums, I've noticed that a lot of those dark forms you need to put in lower light in order for them to keep dark. And I'll show you one that I do have like that, that I've given probably too much light and she's now remained lighter. <laughs> but with this one, I had her in the exact same light. I have all these plants here. It's pretty bright and it grew in dark. So the new leaf already looked very, very dark and the whole time it just remained dark. So I never had any kind of issues with that. I didn't buy her as a dark form, but when the seller posted her, I was like, whoa, that's so beautiful. That's so dark and I want it. I don't know what makes a true dark form, but to me, she's more of a true dark form than my ones that have been sold to me as a dark form are. Just completely incredible. And I, like I said, I will be putting out that Queen Anthurium video and it'll probably be as soon as the leaf on my other Queen Anthurium kind of grows out and hardens. I kind of just want a video with all my Queen Anthuriums to record and just talk about them and what I do to take care of them. And honestly, gosh, they're, to me, they're easier than some of my other Anthuriums and it's it's kind of crazy, but but I have honestly learned a lot through my Queen Anthurium, my original one. Lesson learned there. <laughs> so here's a, another Lox the Plant cellar plant, and it's this is Stormy. I actually am gonna have a time lapse of Stormy come out of the whole process of its new leaf growing. So I hope you all do enjoy that. I'm very excited about it. I plan to do them more often, but not frequently because honestly. <laughs> It's 
a lot to kind of set the camera every day and then have to come in multiple like I have to at least set it twice a day because my camera only runs for eight hours so yeah but it's gorgeous this was my original favorite leaf and honestly it still probably is because it's like you know it's the original like you can't really backtrack like that <laughs> I don't know but I love this one. It's so cute. So this is my very large spaghetti eye and he's had some temperature stress issues, which is why his bottoms look like this. Also his petiole has kind of drooped this way. It used to be straight up. And I can't tell if he's trying to kind of bend his head down away from the light or if he's trying to reach toward more light. So I've kind of tried pushing him away and that didn't change anything. So I pushed him further toward the light. So I'm gonna see if that does. Yeah, he's pretty stunning. Honestly, I didn't give him enough fertilizer either, so he killed off his other leaves that had grown in, which were, they were significantly smaller, probably like about this size compared to him. <laughs> but yeah, so I personally think he needs more light, which is why he's reaching. He shouldn't be this dark, so I'm guessing he compensated for the lack of light by excess chlorophyll. But I really, really love my forgetty eyes. It's awesome to have the heart-shaped leaves. I'm in love with my heart-shaped leaves, but it can be refreshing to see a different shape. <laughs> and it's so, so beautiful. And here is my dark forgetty eye. I don't know if I've ever called him that, but no matter how much light I give him, he grows in dark and he's very velvety as compared to the other forgetty eye I have. But if you can tell with this leaf here, he has also suffered temperature stress. And this is his brand new leaf here, which looks really phenomenal. I love how the veining is so different on both the forgetty eyes. This one has kind of like a neon green veining. The other one was much more silver. And I think that's so cool just to kind of see all the differences. Forgetty eye life. And then back to queen anthuriums. So this is to me why dark forms are confusing because when I purchased this plant, it had this leaf, which is very dark. And then this one here in my greenhouse, this leaf grew in and it's like a few shades lighter than this leaf here. And now I have my newest leaf, which is growing in my plant room. It's actually not quite hardened. So it has some still growing to do. So it'll probably get, it's gotten darker though. But it's, the leaves aren't as dark as the original ones, which tells me they gave them much less light in order to induce this darkness. And honestly, if you have a true dark form plant, I feel like you shouldn't have to kind of struggle to get it dark. I mean, it's not like they're light light, but can you see the difference in the color shades? Just, I mean, I absolutely love it. Like she's very, very gorgeous. I'm so happy with this new leaf. It's just extraordinary. And the good thing is none of the queens have suffered any temperature stress. They have been the most easygoing, like indoor winter plants and that surprises me. So this is that susty water meter that I was talking about. As you can see here, it just turned white. So I knew when I came in for filming today that I have to water my anthuriums after recording this video. I didn't do it prior because some of these pots are heavy and if I add water to them, I was not gonna feel like holding them. <laughs> so this leaf was already here and like that other queen that suffered some kind of like a bit too much watering, he did too, just at the bottom there. And since I've learned my lesson, it hasn't been an issue. <laughs> but this regale just threw out this leaf right here. So it still has quite a bit more growing to do and I'm really happy with that. I have two more regales in my greenhouse. I won't be showing you them today. I just wanna focus on my plant room plants, but they're all different and kind of like their look and they're gorgeous. I can't wait. I'll probably end up making like specific videos on like different variations of anthuriums. So that'll be really fun to just kind of compare them all. But yeah, he's doing really great. So then I have my Ace of Spades here. Um, its original leaf wasn't hot, so that came off and it took a long time for this leaf to even grow in. Um, but yeah, so he's finally like about done hardening, I believe. Super, super velvety. But what's kind of disappointing is these yellow edges 
which I'm also attributing to that temperature stress. So sometimes it's better if your anthuriums don't grow during winter time because it can affect their leaves negatively if they are susceptible to drops in temperature. So then I have my anthurium marmoratum, <laughs> who's very large. Um, I'm thinking about putting it in a hanging basket somewhere because its petioles did get pretty long. Um, it's fine where it is at the bottom of one of my shelves, but it definitely gets a little bit of less light, but it's very, very, very gorgeous. Super beautiful. And these grow in so stunning. I mean, they all grow in stunning, but this one had those really light peach color and it was super, super beautiful and very elegant. So for this plant, I have two of them. They display different features, which is why I like them. And the water burianum in this Warquianum water burianum hybrid does not like the lower temps. <laughs> so unfortunately it grew this leaf in here, has some issues and that it has this leaf it has also grown in. So it threw out two, which is amazing. The original leaf, I believe its head was just kind of like, the leaf was just ripped and hanging there. So it's exciting to finally have new leaves. And honestly, I'm surprised it threw out two. So that's awesome. I really love the curvature it has up here on this leaf. This leaf grew a bit different. It's kind of just wider. So it's strange how these two leaves look very different. I'm accustomed to seeing kind of differences in new leaves as they grow, but this one looks very different, which is crazy, especially because they're not too different in size. And here's my other one, which displays much more velvety features. It has a lot of shimmer to it. So when I bought this one, it had the roughest time acclimating and it lost its original leaves. It threw out this leaf and it's finally throwing out a second leaf here. So I'm impressed in this hybrid's ability to grow leaves pretty much super quickly as soon as it's kind of decided it's happy where it is. And also I know I haven't mentioned, but with the temperature stress, I reached out to an expert collector, kind of just talked to them about it. And they told me it was completely normal to have that. And he has experienced that and he has recommended a treatment and I have just mixed a batch up. So I'm gonna apply it to them. So what happens is with the temperature stress, it's superficial, but you can have probably some kind of like bacteria at the edge. So you wanna kind of just kill that and dry it out. When the temperature increases, it should kind of settle on its own, but to be safe rather than sorry, I'm gonna be applying this treatment to my plants. And I'll also be going over that in that video that I talked about. But just look at that shimmer. This one's incredible. It's so beautiful. I <laughs> cherish this little one. So what I initially had my question about if silver, too much silver was bad for anthuriums, this is the plant that I had referenced <laughs> um, originally, because while the other ones do have a lot of silver, this one has an extreme amount of silver. So this was sold to me as a Magnificum Crystallinum. I have seen them with a lot of silver. I've seen them with normal silver veining. So I don't know what's going on with this plant. I don't know if it's just another Crystal Hope mislabeled. Not sure, but honestly, it's insane. Like, look at the silver on these leaves. I don't know what I'm doing to my anthuriums to make them produce so much silver, but like, I'm trying, I'm trying not to be too worried about it. I mean, it looks gorgeous. And this is its newest leaf here that it just popped out. So this one, I believe it popped out before winter and this one it's popping out right now. So it hasn't quite hardened yet. So beautiful. Yeah, I I love, love, love this plant. <laughs> I don't even care if I do have three crystal hopes. I'm gonna keep three crystal hopes, just like I'm gonna keep like five queen anthuriums. I don't know. I want to really like a plant. I have a bad habit of collecting multiples. I have a lot of magnificums too. I'm like a child where I'm like easily and like fascinated by something and eh, it's a problem. For this Doriaki crystallinum hybrid, this is its winter leaf here. So very cute. They're all very like petite leaves. Um, I can't remember if it threw out a, this leaf during winter too, but they're all definitely not original to the plant. <laughs> I have another one of these in my greenhouse that's bigger and it's so pretty. I'll stick a picture on the screen here just so you can look at it. 
So the differences with the normal dorayaki and the crystallinum dorayaki is the crystallinum ones are supposed to have thicker silver veining. But like I said, I have some kind of like crack in my soil where I get really silver leaves. So this dorayaki here, this is the leaf it shipped to me with, and it has since produced this very thick silver veined leaf and this one. So if it didn't have this leaf, I would think it was a crystallinum dorayaki hybrid. And I'm extremely confused at that because I really do like the narrower veining on this original leaf. So I wish I had more of those. I mean, not that I mind the silver, but it's just not what I expected for this plant. So hopefully it will produce more of those one day, but I would like to know what I'm doing here. So this plant was sold to me as a crystallinum. Um, I'm not sure if it's a full crystallinum. I don't think it is. I think it's some kind of hybrid or maybe even a natural variation because it's so round. <laughs> like this leaf it had produced, I think during the summertime or maybe fall time. And it's long because I had it in my glass display cabinet. So it's much farther away from lighting. Yeah, so that's why the petiole is so long. <laughs> but look how round this particular leaf is. This leaf, it's just thrown out within the last month. It's much less rounder. Um, I would say it's still not quite crystallinum in my opinion. It looks different to me. So I think it's some kind of hybrid, but the petiole on this one is much shorter, which I'm super happy about. Cause while I'm not giving it like a ton of light, there is a light pointed at it, even though it's quite far back. So I think it gets like that residual lighting and it's pretty happy with that. But I absolutely love this plant. It's just kind of funky like in its growth. Cause even like this leaf here, which is one of the original ones, never sh like when it arrived, I never thought, oh, this is a crystallinum. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you three plants from my original Loxa plant seller order and their wonderful new leaves. <laughs> so like I said, these are all unknown hybrids. So this one I've named Morgan and I always loved it cause it felt very leathery. So the brand new leaf on this one is pretty amazing. So it is this guy over here which really surprised me with its growth. So I expect usually them to grow kind of like slightly bigger, but honestly like twice the size is something that can happen with your anthuriums. But I'm thoroughly impressed at this one. It's just weird how it feels. It definitely has like a leatheriness to it. So this is Ambrose and he had these tiny leaves here. I know he had a few more when I got him, but when some of them had sh like snapped during shipping. And I think one also snapped when I was cleaning it, which was really, really devastating. Sorry, I'm just like staring at him because he had spider mites and I treated for him and I treated him the other day. So I was just taking a look at his leaves, get paranoid. <laughs> Honestly, to me, like when I see, if I see spider mites, it's not end all for my plants. Um, Unless it's a syngonium because they have so many ruffles that I just don't even try. Like I don't even, yeah. So, <laughs> so I noticed them. I think I didn't even treat them for a few days, which is probably not good practice. But um, I treated him last week and I don't see anything, but it's good to keep on treating them too, just to make sure. I just use diluted rubbing alcohol and I clean them off, but it's so, so beautiful. This leaf isn't velvety, but I adore it. I love the shape. I think it's super cute. Like the last one, it's just different from my normal velvety anthurium. So it's just nice to kind of throw different ones into the mix. So this crazy baby plant here had one leaf for the longest time. It had this leaf up front. It lost all of its other leaves due to acclimation. And I was very scared because I have very bad luck with baby anthuriums in that they just don't survive. It was a trying time. But I made sure that I didn't, you know, heavily water it, even though it's in this big pot. You can put things in big pots. Think of the earth. I mean, the ground is so large. It's not a pot, you know, it's not a particular size. So that's not going to be an issue. So you can choose really big pots as long as you water them correctly. So I just make sure to water the little spot that he's in and he's cool with that. And you know how cool he is with that? He threw out two leaves at the same time which really was like super confusing for me. I've just never had that happen, especially like with baby anthuriums, that's even more insane. So you have this leaf here 
and this leaf right here that it threw out. So got three in total. So I'm super, super happy this one is stabilized and it's very happy with life. <laughs> so another one that has had some new growth is my Anthurium Voodoo Child. It's thrown out a similar leaf size plant. So these were the original leaves that I had and then this leaf here that it threw out, which is very dark and that's awesome. So loving the dark color. <laughs> and that surprised me because it's not too far away from a grow light. So yeah, my Voodoo Child. All right, so I'm gonna show you two more plants in this room and then I'm gonna call it done for today. And hopefully I didn't talk your ear off this whole video. And these last two are gonna be my Magnificums. So this is one of my Magnificums here. I'm sorry if you can't see them too well. This light kind of um, makes it difficult to show you. I will bring him down sometime. I just didn't feel like getting my ladder out right now. But he's, uh, he's looking pretty good. And then I have my other Magnificum here, and he's looking phenomenal. So he did get thrips during winter, but that was treated. He grew in this leaf, which got a bit deformed and had some other issues, so I ended up cutting it. But then he surprised me with this leaf, which I didn't expect at all. So I'm really happy with that, and yeah, he's looking pretty good. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hoped you enjoyed this and seeing these winter growth updates for some of my anthuriums. I would love any feedback down below. And if you want to see more content, please subscribe. I do try my best. I, I do try my best to post every Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you so much.